Well, Tom, congratulations on your first UFC title defense. Um, you know, everyone knows you can finish fights easy, but I don't know if everyone expects you to finish this one in literally a minute. Did you see it going that way? And how happy are you with your own performance? The, the performance was a bit messy, to be honest. Um, if I hit anybody clean, they're going over. That's, a, that's, that's what's going on these days. <laughs> if I hit someone clean, they're going over. And there's no arguments about that. It's proven now. Um, Kurtz was actually a lot slower than I thought, but he had really long arms. So a few of his, a few of his punches I thought were going to miss, and they, they got me. But uh, yeah, we were still like both finding our range as, as the fight kind of progressed a little bit. Um, I managed to catch one, and it was over. Um, there was some talk about maybe the stoppage was a little bit early. Did you feel that he was basically stuck there and wasn't going anywhere and it was a fair stoppage? Mate, what kind of idiot is saying that? Like, I dropped him with a one-two. He's face down on the canvas. I've got 250 pounds on his back and I'm landing seven, eight unanswered shots. Like, where, where is he going to go? Do you know what I mean? Like, where, where's Curtis Blades going to go after that? There's, there's only one place going to go, and it's asleep. So are we going to let it get to that point, or are we going to look after fighter safety? Because I, I don't want it to get to that point. Do you know what I mean? He's, he's unable to intelligently defend himself, and uh, it was stopped at the right time. Great refing by Mark Goddard. You know, you said there that you're, you're dropping everyone early these days. You know, is it despite what the punch machine says, do you think you might be one of the hardest-hitting heavyweights of all time at this point? Uh, I have good timing. I have good timing. That's what it is. Um, mate, if any heavyweight hits you, and I'm accurate, if any heavyweight hits you on the, on, in the face, you're probably going over. Do you know what I mean? And I hit accurately. I hit fast. I make my opponents twitch before I hit them so they don't see the punch. Um, so n probably not. Like, I don't think I'm some crazy power puncher, but if I hit you, you're definitely going to sleep, yeah? We all know what sort of should be next. Dana was in here and says that they'd be crazy not to make you the backup for Stipe versus John Jones, so it sounds like you're going to New York. Is there a part of you, though, I know you get itchy knuckles, right? They fight in November. We don't know what happens to them. Then they could maybe want a six-month gap. Is there a chance you fight anyone other than those two, or does it have to be them next? Like who? Be the winner of Cyril and maybe Volkov, eh? Nah, I want to fight John Jones. Or oh, oh, Stipe. Let's not discredit Stipe and what he's done. Um, I think a lot of people are looking past him, probably maybe sometimes me, to be honest. But um, whoever wins that one, I'm fighting next, for sure. Unless they both retire. You're a little bit surprised we haven't heard from Mr. Jones tonight? I didn't know that we hadn't. I'm sure we will at some stage. He'll be very angry about it, all the fact that everyone's saying that I can beat him. But that's okay. Um, on the contrary to what John Jones fanboys might think, I have nothing against John Jones as a person. I think I'm the best heavyweight in the world. And if he thinks he's in the heavyweight, best heavyweight in the world, let's settle it. Simple as that. It's not rocket science. There's two guys who are claiming to be the best heavyweight in the world. Let's settle it. Simple as that. I'm right here. Uh, you said in media day, you know, Curtis Blades has been in the top five of this heavyweight division for like um, even before you were in the UFC. Is this a guy that you think you'll have to see again, you know, considering how the first fight went, you're technically one and one, or are you done with the Curtis Blades chapter? Me and Curtis Blades on a trilogy. <laughs> Give the people what they want to see. It seems like every, it seems like every time he, he loses a number one contender, he fights his way. No, nah, Curtis is a high level guy, man. I've said all week he's the toughest stylistic matchup in the division for me. I still believe that. Curtis is good. I thought the fight was going to go longer. Um, I didn't mean to knock him out that early. I See, I've got an issue, right, with fighters and coaches always saying the obvious thing, which is, let's drag Tom into deep waters. Let's see what he's like when it gets to the third and fourth round. Fucking great. Drag me there then. But no one's been able to do it yet. So you can mouth off all you want when the camera's in your face. But let's see... What happens when it comes down to dragging me in the third and fourth round and the fifth round? No one's managed to do it yet, so I'm still waiting for that myself. I'd love to see what I look like myself when I do that, because to be honest with you, in the last two years since I fought Curtis last, my training has been on an absolute different level. Like these days, I just train with a, a squad of heavyweights that's chose out for me. It's just 
honestly, it's the highest level training of heavyweights of anywhere in the world that we've got right now. We have the highest level of heavyweights in one room. We have like between 10 and 15 top level heavyweights every day on the mat. And the amount of improved since I've been doing that is incomparable. Is that, is that a word? We're, go we're going with that. Incomparable to uh, the progress I made before that. Like my training now is, honestly, I can't even tell you how much I've improved in the last two years. And um, with that level of training and th those level of training partners, I just feel like my skill level has gone through the roof. So is part of you annoyed it was only a minute long? Which is yes, I want, I want longer. And last one for me, uh, you kind of touched upon it, like you're not, like you're giving Stipe credit, like Stipe could win, but it seems like they're saying like, you're gonna fight John next, you're gonna fight John next. Why don't you think fans and pundits are giving Stipe this chance against John Jones? Uh, well, he's just a bit older, isn't he? And he's not, I mean, I think he last won, like he lost his last fight that was like three or four years ago, and then he's not won for like four or five years. So I understand, do you know what I mean? But I, I don't think at heavyweight you can ever count anybody out. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that fight goes, you know what I mean? But as I said, excuse me, I'm a bit gassy. I just had a beer. I, uh, I think I'm the best heavyweight in the world right now. And if you think you are, whoever you may be, John Jones, Stipe, whoever, let's fight about it. It's pretty simple, do you know what I mean? I'm not, there's absolutely no disrespect here for all the John Jones or Stipe fanboys. I'm the best heavyweight in the world. If they think they are, come and get it. Let, let's settle it. It's very, it's very, very easy to settle in this sport. We both sign a contract. We both get a date. We both train for eight weeks. And let's fight in front of 20, 25,000 people and millions watching around the world. And let's see who the best is. Everyone will see it. We'll decide. And we'll move on. Tom, before the fight, you said it was going to be the greatest ring walk of all time. Do you think it delivered? What do you think? I think it delivered. Solid. I reckon it was solid. And to top it all off, I got a message off Noel Gallagher this morning. <laughs> he he, he uh, WhatsApped me. I don't know. I have no idea how he got my number, actually. But <laughs> I think it was him. Anyway, he said it, he said it was him, and it was him on the, the WhatsApp picture. Uh, and I just sent one back saying, yeah, mate, I'm coming out to Supersonic as well as part of my walkout. And he sent one back saying, that's, that's amazing. Like, he loved it. He lo and I hope that Noel got to see it and Liam got to see it and uh, went with my usual Curtis. I don't know. Paddy's walkout's pretty awesome as well, though, isn't it? So... Um, but for me personally, I don't think I'll ever get a walkout in reception like I did, did tonight. I mean, you say that. Could we potentially get Noel to play you out at some point? I don't know. That's not really a thing, though, is it, with the UFC? But, I mean, I'd be up for it, yeah. Last one from me. Obviously, the performance was fantastic, and hopefully the John Jones fight does happen. But with it being so good, do you think it could have potentially pushed Jones further away? I have no idea. I don't know. John Jones is a strange guy, man. I don't know what he's doing. He does some weird moves. Like, I'm, I'm just over here trying to be the best heavyweight in the world, be the best version of myself. He's done all that. He's done every... I'm not taking away from what he's done in his career. The, the, the guy's career is unbelievable, but um, I'm just trying to... I, me, personally, I'm trying to fight people, and that's it. So, I don't know what he's doing. I can't speak for him. Tom, down here to your left. Um, obviously, this week was the two-year anniversary of that uh, ill-fated night yep. at the O2 Arena. How how good did it feel to exercise the ghost of that that night? Cause yeah, that that was good. I mean, I've not I have nothing against Curtis. I actually really like him as a human being. He's a really cool guy. Um, but I just needed to beat him. It was, I knew that I was better than him then. And as I, as I just said to these guys, me now, in comparison to me two years ago with the training regiment I've got, is hey. It's, it's just not even close. Like, I'm way, way better now than I was then. And uh, I'm ready to take on anyone, man, honestly. Cheers, buddy. Tom, dipping your knuckles, soaking your hands in petrol must have worked, eh? They're like stones, mate. They're like stones. <laughs> uh, do you know what it is? Uh, a lot of Americans don't get British humour. <laughs> I was obviously taking the piss there. But do you know what? I was going to keep that going. I thought it was hilarious that the way everyone was, uh... but then, um, like, kids started asking me about how long I leave my knuckles in for, and then I got tagged in a couple of stuff on Instagram of, like, kids putting the knuckles in petrol. I'm like, I don't even know if this is safe, you know. I don't really want to promote this anymore. So uh, if you go to my YouTube channel, you can see a video where I, like, 
explain that. I don't really do it. So, sorry, Americans. I was taking the piss on that one. Uh, Tom, right here. Hello. Uh, you mentioned having a beer post-fight. What was the beer of choice? Oh, they just gave me some uh, Stella or something. It was terrible. It was awful. Like the cheapest beer ever, but it, was, it, it tasted pretty good. I uh, feel pretty good now. I have to say, once you got the finish, I think everyone in the stands got a bit of a beer shower. There was beer flying Oh, everywhere. yeah. You got one on your way I did. Out I did. I, someone passed me a pint. I started drinking it, and then someone knocked it out of my hand. I was just like, oh, thanks for that. But uh, it was great, mate. That, I'll never get a reception like that again. I've literally gone out there tonight and just lived my dream. And um, how many people, in all honesty, existing on planet Earth right now say that they get to live their actual dream? I don't think there's many. Um, and I just feel like so privileged and grateful to be able to do that. Like for the, for, I, I've been to every Manchester show basically that there is sitting in the nosebleeds with my dad. Do you know what I mean? And then to, to go in there and be the co-main event fight for a UFC title is just incredible. And Tom, uh, you're making it look easy in there every time. You're stepping in there, still keeping that shortest average fight time in the UFC. When you say you're the greatest heavyweight on the planet and you look at John Jones and Stipe Miocic, that dominant fashion in the way you're winning. Do you see it going the exact same way with those guys? Are you that confident in your abilities? No, absolutely. Like, well, I'm co confident in my abilities, yeah, but um, I never see it going that way, to be honest. I'm not even trying to finish. Like, tonight, I didn't even feel like I really had my range on him properly. I, I thought it was going to be a long fight. I thought it was going to be, like, three, four rounds at least. Curtis is a tough guy to get out of there. Um, yeah, that, that's when I do my best work is when I'm, like, not... Like I say, it was a bit of a messy performance, but... I got the win, I got the bonus, so I ain't complaining about nothing, do you know what I mean? It was great. And how was this fight day in comparison to others? Long day in your own city, and that atmosphere, like we've all mentioned, that was Wait, unbelievable. One of the most stressful days of my life. Really? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. So I changed, my, uh, I changed my sleep pattern over the last couple of weeks. Started sleeping at like 4 a.m., staying up. Sleep until like 10, 11, like as late as I could. And then last night I thought, right, I'm just going to get a normal night's sleep now. I'm going to go to bed like midnight, get up like 7 or 8 o'clock. Then I'm going to get like a big nap in the afternoon. So that was my plan. Mate, there is no chance I could nap. I was so nervous all day. I was literally just lay there thinking of a million different ways about how this fight is going to go. So I've li at this point, I've, mate, I've literally been awake for about 24 hours. I'm pretty tired. Um, but... It was all worth it, mate. mate. Mate, I can't complain. You know, I've been saying it all along. I've got a lot of friends who, you're an Atherton guy. Of course, I, I'm an Atherton guy. Like, uh, a lot of my friends work in a fucking factory. At, so they start at 4 a.m. And, and they work for 12 hours. And they do that every day without complaining. Like, I've got to do it once. I've got, I've got to fight one night at 4 or 5 a.m. These guys are doing that for 30, 40 years and looking after the family doing it that way. Like, I ain't got nothing to complain about. But, it was definitely a long day. And defending that belt that you've got in front of you now, I know you believe that you are the official heavyweight champion, but do you think it will feel much different? And I'm not talking about if it's John Jones that you defeat, because that's a different, different success entirely, but will it actually feel different holding the official UFC title? No, I, I think I'm the best heavyweight in the world. I don't think I'm the... Uh, John's the undisputed champion. But I'm the best in the world, if that makes any sense. We know, we know what John's doing. John, John was also saying, John, John was there crossing his fingers and toes tonight, hoping that I'd lose to Curtis. Let's not bullshit about it. Like, he, put, he, he posted about it loads anyway that I'm going to lose to him. Uh, yeah, that, that didn't happen. So um, that's the fight I won next. Final one from me. That fight would obviously be early next year. Are you cool just waiting your time and obviously if something does happen in November where you're ready to step in that'll be you did it last year didn't you, you yeah I'll do it on. again I'll do it again I'll be ready to go in November if it, well there's talks in November isn't there yeah like they're talking about fighting in November where, where's the announcement and the contract signed because I, I don't really know where that is at the moment so um, I'll, I'll be ready to step in mate in November if someone gets injured which is quite likely let's be honest um, so I'll it, I'll be ready, mate. I'll be, I'm ready to fight whenever. Tom well Danny, to your left. Sorry, mate. Yeah. Just two quick ones from me. You say you're the best heavyweight in the world. Mm -hmm. Who's number two and who's number three? Mm. It's 
a good question. Um, I think at the moment, you have to say John Jones is number two. I don't know. It's, it's a tough case with John, isn't it, to be honest, because he's had one fight against a guy that was really good stylistically, a really good stylistic matchup for him. Um, so I don't know, mate. I, I, don't, I don't like rankings anyway, but I know that I'm number one. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I'm bothered about. And the other one for me is, uh, I don't know if you heard Michael Bisbee's comments in the lead up to, uh, to this weekend. I think he, he said it a couple of times. I think he said it on a broadcast. And he definitely said it at the Q&A. He said that you've, you've got the ability to become one of the all-time greats and possibly one of the pound-for-pound pound best ever. He's called you the heavyweight George St. Pierre. Um, what does it mean to get that sort of praise from a legend of the sport who's sort of preceded you in, as, a, as, a, as a UK MMA champion? And how far do you think you can go? Massive praise, of course. Um, as you said, Bispin's a legend in UK MMA. Not even, even, I think it's a bit... It's not right just to call him a legend in UK MMA. He's a legend in MMA. Um, but I think I, can, I think I can definitely fulfill that. I feel like I've got, the, I've got what it takes. Do you know what I mean? And, and I, I've thought this for a long time, but obviously I didn't have the proof to back it up. But now, now I do. And I think that people are starting to jump on the bandwagon a bit. And if you're not, you're not... I'll work on proving you wrong, do you know what I mean? But uh, for right now, I've got a lot more work to do, so I'm not getting ahead of myself. Uh, one fight at a time and all that stuff. Um, but for right now, I just want to... You know, I, I don't know how long I'm going to stay in this sport for. Do you know, I, like, I know now, I'm, I'm 31. Heavyweights go a lot longer than other divisions, but I'm definitely on the second half of my career now. Uh, so I want to make as much money and, and get as much glory as possible and have as many fights as possible. Like, I want to... I want to be as active as I can, so we'll see what happens. Tom, just in front of you, uh, you said in the cage that you're just an ordinary man doing extraordinary things. We've seen a lot of you know, champions in combat sports lose the run of themselves with fame and money. Um, how do you keep your humility and are you afraid of losing it? Uh, I'm not afraid to lose it because it's never going to happen. Um, I don't know, I feel like this... I'm me personally, and I can't speak for everybody, but I'm not really that into the, like the celebrity lifestyle at all. It doesn't really phase me. I like. I said this all week, and uh, my team, my poor team over there, are probably going to be sick of it. But what I like doing is sticking a pair of gloves on. The other person sticking a pair of gloves on, both taking our shirts off, going in a cage full, filled with 25,000 people and millions watching around the world, and finding out who the best is. That's what I like doing. Now, for other guys, I know other guys have got movie roles and rap albums coming out and they're pushing this brand and they're pushing that brand. What I like doing is fighting people. That's what I really like doing. So uh, I'm not interested in buying a yacht and cruising about on that or buying a private plane and going to a party in Vegas. I'm not really that interested in it, mate. What, what I'm interested in is being the best version of myself that I can possibly be. There was a beautiful video that came out, I think it was Dose of Society did it, where you spoke about your, your child and uh, raising awareness for autism. How important is it to you to use your fighting career as a vehicle to raise awareness to causes closest to your heart? Um, I'm always a bit on the fence talking about autism, but I feel like I need to because it's something that doesn't get enough attention. Um, I'm on the fence for the reason being that I'm new to it. My child's five years old, we've had a diagnosis two years, so it's, it, there's, there's people there who've been looking after autistic people for 30, 40 years, you know what I mean? I'm very, very new to it, but um, I know that me and my family were very lost before we got a diagnosis, and I think that there's a lot of people out there who, are, who have been waiting literally years to get any diagnosis and any help with it, and uh, it's a tough place to be in, and, and we were having a tough time with it, and... We still are. We still do have a tough time with it, and I want to get as much light and help for other families as possible. So if I have to use my platform for it, even though, like I say, I'm not the most educated person on autism or anything like that, and I don't claim to be, but if I can shed any light on it, I absolutely will. Thank you. Congratulations. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Uh, just here. Uh, two for me. Um, you've done a lot of charity work in Wigan, and um, I saw a video of the young people actually with you the other day. Um, was that a lot of the motivation behind this fight, like having all these young people looking up to you, uh, and has that helped you to win today? I don't, I don't really... It sounds a bit mad, but as, as a high-level professional athlete, I think you have to be a bit selfish. So I don't really see myself like as an inspiration, and um, I'm going to do this to inspire this kid and that kid. 
if, if me being successful is a byproduct of that, that's absolutely amazing. And uh, I want to do more of that kind of stuff. Um, and it's it still, as a guy, as I said on the, on the Pulse Fight uh, interview, as a regular guy, I still find it a bit weird that I'm like inspiring people. Um, but if I can do, now that's not my intention. My intention is to win fights and be successful in that. But if I can do that as a byproduct, that's incredible. And uh, I'll do that as much as I can. And, and you talked a little bit more about like trying to make money through fighting as well. Like you've won a bonus today. So how much does that mean to you? And we asked Paddy before about what he was going to spend it on. And he says, family, um, what's your plans? Is there any? I don't know, to be honest. But me, Paddy, and my mate, my mate Mick Park in one one, which I was absolutely over the moon for him. In all honesty, I've got goosebumps talking about it. Um, Mick is the nicest guy ever, and he's still like he's four and zero in the UFC now, but he's still like a bit overlooked because his performances, and I'm sure he'll agree with me that, with me on this, have been a bit boring so far. And he went out there tonight in front of like a a home crowd and performed, and knocked the guy out, and got a hundred grand bonus, like. That is unbelievable. Like when the UFC came in and uh, Mick wasn't with me, Mick's, Mick's already gone, Mick's left. Um, when the UFC came in and told me that I won a bonus and Mick, like I was just as excited for Mick as I was me. Like absolutely incredible. And obviously Paddy as well, but I don't know Paddy as, as well as I do Mick. I see Mick all the time and Mick's just the, the nicest guy ever and he deserves it so much. Thank you. Do you think your performance uh, kind of pushed Alex Pereira's dreams of coming up to heavyweight down a bit? Oh, no, no, I don't think so. Um, but here's, here's a thought for you. I was thinking about this the other day. What, what about, so they're saying that Stipe and John Jones are going to fight in um, MSG in November. Why don't we do a tournament? We'll do John, Stipe, me, Alex, and do a four-man tournament two fights in one night and let's find out who the real heavyweight champion in the world is like we've got the the best heavyweight of all time we've got the the best MMA fighter of all time we've got the light heavyweight champion and then we've got me who's just a poxy interim champion do you know what I mean let's let's do that two fights in one night put it to Dana I'm sure Dana's going to be here in a minute and uh, he's been Dana didn't really like the idea of him moving up no, I don't. This is, I, I am honestly the biggest fan of Alex Pereira. What, like, he is one scary guy. Um, but would that not be a cool little little thing? Two fights in one night. Like, like, let's see how we get on. I mean, I've got the, the lowest average fight time in the UFC, and it's even lower after tonight. Like, my chances of doing all right in that are pretty good. Like, let's, let's put some money on the table, and let's, uh, let's see who the guy is at heavyweight.